colleague is a senior solution engineer at Salesforce supporting higher ed in New York and New Jersey. Her background is not in technology, but she's used free resources like Trailhead to learn the skills she needed to change careers. So that's pretty interesting. And she's also, guess what, bonus, she's graduating from Baruch in May with her master's degree in international affairs. So that's awesome. Uh, congratulations in advance, Stephanie, for almost completing that program. And um, with that in mind, let me ask uh, Jonathan to unmute himself. And I'm not sure if Stephanie as well wants to unmute herself and I'll, I'll, uh, we'll just pass it over to you, Jonathan. Excellent. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I assume everyone yeah. else can. All right. Wonderful. And, well, John and, and Jonathan, um, what I'll do now is um, just give me a moment. I'm just going to unshare my screen. Okay. And you now should be able to share your screen whenever you want to. But I I'll give you the floor, Jonathan. Take it away. We're looking forward to hear to seeing your presentation today. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Much appreciated. Thank you for having us today. So, um, I think you. I think the intro about sums it up. So there's no need for me to uh, to to go into that. So I can just get started here. Um, the agenda for tonight for 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 our piece here. Um, I'm, I'm going to go through a, a handful of slides that that hopefully provide uh, a bit of an overview and introduction to Salesforce, and then um, I'll, I'm going to pass it over to, to to my colleague Stephanie, who will who will provide a demonstration of our core product, which is the CRM, as well as Tableau, which is a, a data visualization uh, BI uh, uh, application. Um, and then um, we'll, we'll do some, some Q&A uh, at, at the end as, as well. Um, so if, if you do have any questions, um, you can put them in the chat. I, Stephanie may be able to chime in um, as I'm talking. If there are questions for Stephanie, I may be able to chime in while she's talking. But if we don't get to them, um, you know, make note of them and we can, of course, stress them uh, at, at the end. Um, so. So that being said, what is Salesforce? So simply put, Salesforce is a customer, manage, customer relationship management solution. All businesses have customers. CUNY has customers, students. Uh, they need to interact with their customers. Uh, there, there's multiple departments, divisions within businesses. Uh, there's silos oftentimes. So what Salesforce does, what a CRM does, uh, what Salesforce CRM does is help break down those silos. So think about marketing, customer service, uh, commerce, sales. The, CR, the Salesforce CRM platform provides the ability for companies and organizations to break down those silos and provide a shared view of the customer, 360 degree view of the customer. And this is, this is important that it, it creates a single source of truth. I'm going to come back to this in a bit. But first, a, a little bit of history um, about Salesforce and why this is important, not just in terms of a history lesson, but there's some pieces on here that sort of, I think, provide context and, and, and is a good background uh, of, of sort of, it, it gives an explanation of why Salesforce is, is, is as successful as they are today because of this uh, history. So founded about roughly you know, 20 years ago, in, in San Francisco, almost that, that, that stereotypical story it wasn't a garage, it was an apartment rented in, in, in San Francisco. Mark Beninoff, uh, current CEO and founder, um, started it. And um, less than a year later, the CRM uh, application was released. Um, and again, that's, that's sort of the, the right now, Salesforce, our portfolio is gigantic and there's, there's a lot of different products, but at its core, uh, CRM is, is, is the foundation of, of the company, if you will. Um, in 2001, Salesforce started their 111 model, 1111 model, philanthropy model. What this means is that 1% of our time, 1% of our equity, 1% of our product 
uh, goes to, to nonprofits. So why that's important? Ultimately, it's it's sort of why Stephanie and I are here because out of that model, I'll get to I'll get to this more in a bit. Salesforce.org was created. Uh, and that's sort of the, we'll call it the division of Salesforce that, that Stephanie and I are, are, are in. Uh, in 2005, the Salesforce launched the App Exchange. Um, the App Exchange is a marketplace where third party app developers um, can build solutions on top of the Salesforce platform and sell them to customers. So think of this as, uh, as Apple's uh, App Store and uh, Salesforce is your iPhone. So these are simply business applications that sit on top of, of, of Salesforce. Um, and again, I'll come back to this and why, why I think this is important for, for, for students like yourselves. Um, in 2008, Salesforce.org was officially founded. So Salesforce.org was, uh, as of about two years ago, was a separate entity. Uh, and Salesforce.org was responsible to, to sell to philanthropic organizations, nonprofits, and educational institutions. Um, and then a couple of years ago, Salesforce actually, because of the success that they were having in this space, actually acquired Salesforce.org. And now Salesforce.org is officially a part of Salesforce.com. So we are, like I said before, we're essentially, think of it, I think the best, the best way to describe it is a division within Salesforce selling to those verticals. Um, and Stephanie and I uh, are specifically responsible for a handful of, of universities uh, in, in New Jersey, New York City area. Um, in 2015, tr they started Trailhead. Trailhead is a free online learning platform. Um, Stephanie, this was mentioned in Stephanie's bio, a, a way for her to skill up and, and really transition her career. We're going to touch on this more later. Um, and then over the last year, um, we all have, have had to adapt, as we know. And uh, one of the ways that Salesforce adapted uh, is they created, created work.com. And work.com allows uh, universities, governments, organizations, businesses to, to, to safely reopen. In fact, New York City actually uses, uh, uses Salesforce uh, for contact tracing as well as vaccine management. So you may have, uh, you know, over the course of the last year, have interacted with, with Salesforce one way or another in, uh, through, through those use cases. Um, so on these next few slides, really, I, I want to demonstrate the size, size and scale of, of Salesforce. Um, really, over the last 10 years, Salesforce has seen exponential financial growth. And, and because of that gro growth, or, excuse me, because of that growth, uh, we've been able to propel in terms of leadership of innovation, philanthropy, a leader in culture, uh, number one in people's top uh, 50 companies that care. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, Fortune released their uh, uh, list of 100 best places to work. Salesforce was number two. So again, it, these are great, uh, I guess, accolades, but uh, it's, it's because of the financial growth we're able to, to have success in these other areas. Um, and then, you know, ultimately the financial growth comes from, because we're the number one CRM provider, uh, seven, seven years running. Um, and this just demonstrates, I, I think you can, you can see some of these other names that you're probably familiar with. Uh, within the CRM space, we're by far and away the leader the leader uh, in this area. And, and to give you uh, some idea of some, some of the, the brands uh, and companies, this is just a, a small sample of, uh, of the folks that, that use Salesforce. Um, Ken already mentioned, you know, uh, 99 of the Fortune 100, the number that I have is 97. It may have changed over the last couple hours. I don't know, it's somewhere in that wheelhouse, um, but, most Fortune, uh, Fortune 100 companies, and I dare I say Fortune 500 companies, are using Salesforce uh, one, one way or another. Um, and, you know, oftentimes when you're thinking about these companies, or, or that, 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 especially in your, in your situation right now, these are companies that you may want to work, work for. And chances are the companies are using Salesforce in some way. Um, so... So I think, you know, from, from a learning standpoint, this, uh, what we've tried to do is sort of design these slides and, and, and demos just so, so you can talk a little uh, more educated about Salesforce. And then if you want to take it to the next level, well, we're going to show you some steps here in a bit. 
But so, so what do we sell? I already mentioned, you know, the core of it's CRM. Um, and the CRM product is called Customer 360. This unites all those departments I mentioned, like marketing, sales, commerce, service, IT. Uh, it, it allows them uh, a 360 degree view of the customer. Um, it creates that single source of truth that is, can be very difficult to, <laughs> to attain. Um, and I'm going to show the next slide here uh, in the context of education, I think it might, might, may hit home with you. But um, on, on any given day, Salesforce, uh, through the customer 360 uh, and all these individual departments, if you will, that are, that are leveraging Salesforce and the products that, that we sell to these, these folks, um, 2.6 billion marketing messages. We create 4 million leads for sales organizations, log 19.7 million customer service conversations. Uh, our analytics and, and, and AI platform, Salesforce Einstein, delivers more than 93 billion AI predictions. Um, last year, Black Friday, Commerce Cloud powered more than 10 million orders. So it's really that, again, 360, we're working with all these different areas where historically, sometimes there's, we call them point solutions that have, are targeting one specific aspect Maybe it's a sales product, maybe it's a customer service product, whereas the platform, whereas the Salesforce CRM really is, is, is a holistic app. It's a platform that allows uh, organizations to, to scale and build and to create that single source of truth. So in the context of education, again, this is what Stephanie and I do, um, and you're all familiar with being CUNY students. Um, we provide, we sell the education cloud. Um, so think of this as, uh, as, you know, as a student from the point you're being recruited and you're enrolling and you're, 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 uh, you're, uh, you're actually onboarding, you're becoming a student, you're on admissions. And this is where Stephanie used to work um, uh, at, at her, in her old role. I actually worked in higher education for seven years myself. Um, but all of these touch points, right, they, they're all using technology. And a lot of times these are in, in, in disparate silos uh, across, across, the, across the university. So the education cloud creates that single source of truth, allows you know, folks from financial aid, it, your, your advisors, career services, student affairs, maybe you're an athlete, athletics, the list goes on. Think about all the departments that it takes to service you uh, on, on a campus and throwing that on top of the platform. So it really you know, allows, uh, obviously, a level of breaking down data silos, uh, but also puts all the, all the data in one place, allows to gain insight and analytics in one place. And the university can save money because they're consolidating uh, technology. And ultimately, they're operating more efficiently uh, because, of, because of the technology. So, so that's the education cloud. Again, that's what we, we specialize in. That's what we do every day. And I think it's a good, uh, being a, a CUNY student, I think it's a good way to sort of frame it and provide some better context for you. So what ultimately does that mean for you? Why is this important? Jobs, jobs, jobs. The Salesforce economy is real and it's gigantic. Um, together with our partners and our customers, there's millions of Salesforce jobs around the world. IDC is, is project, projecting that the Salesforce economy will, will add 4.2 new jobs that equates to $1.2 trillion in new business by 2025. So that's the equivalent of Thailand and Belgium's uh, GDP combined or the population of, of New Zealand all getting new jobs. So the opportunity is really quite massive. And, and it's not just Again, this isn't, these aren't just jobs with working for Salesforce. These are jobs working for, sales, working for Salesforce customers and our partner ecosystem. Um, in our partner ecosystem, I mentioned before our app exchange. The app exchange is just is part of that. Um, our customers also need experts to implement our technologies. And that's sort of how we, that is one of the ways that we operate. So you buy Salesforce you need someone to help you implement that. And we call them SIs. So there's a, a number of jobs, there's plenty of jobs sort of, you know, in, in sort of three fronts. You, know, you can work for Salesforce, you can work for, you know, actual users, Salesforce customers, and then you can work, you know, ultimately as part of this, this Salesforce ecosystem on, on the partner level. So there's a lot of opportunity there. And some of those jobs 
Salesforce administrators, there's architects, developers, um, you know, in terms of math minds, uh, business analysts, uh, even if you're working for a sales, a sales department, you're going to have an operations role. You need to have analytical skills. Same thing with marketing. Marketing is pure data these days. Um, yes, there's a creative component, but the bulk of the jobs are going to be in data crunching and, and, and having sort of that, that left and right, right, right brain mentality. So these are, from a Mac mind standpoint, these are all very important skills to have with all of these roles, really. Um, and then, you know, in terms of, in terms of next steps, one of the things you could do um, is go to this. Uh, if you just Google Salesforce, Salesforce uh, career path, it'll come up. URLs right here at the bottom. Um, but but take note of that. And there's more details and you know, salary information. Um, I think there's even a little quiz you could take and, and, and putting you down the right path in terms of what, what your interests are. So, you know, it, again, why coming back to, you know, the, the, the opportunity, um, according to a study by IBM, 120 million workers will, will require rescaling by 2022. So new grads coming out of college, university, need, need, really need to be aware of these innovations um, and have these skills ready to go. And, and if not, you have to be able to quickly get them to put yourself in the, in the best position possible. So for, for example, skills that may not exist today, um, look at the role of a, a data scientist. Um, eight years ago, that was very specialized. Today, this role is in very, very high demand and, and companies need these types of roles and tools to surface their data. And again, coming back to analytics and math, that's, that's at the core of it. Um, so how can, how can you learn these new skills? Um, actually, I threw this slide in here at the last second. This is again to hit to hit home the point that data is is in need, and you need this. Um, Ninety-two percent say they're failing to scale analytics. Three percent say that the three percent have said they successfully complete a digital transformation. So the opportunity is there. Um, you got to take advantage of, of these of these tools and understand that at its core, you know, the analytics is is a big piece of it. So um, how do you get started? Trailhead. So this is where where, where Stephanie was able to succeed and and sort of re reroute her path, um, her career path. This is a free online learning platform that you get started on right away. Um, it's sort of gamified. You can do it on your phone if you want, um, but it's it. There are hundreds of, of of courses that you can take, not just on Salesforce product, but 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 other areas as well. Um, something like one in four learners on, on Trailhead get a new job because of the platform. Um, there are currently two million Trailblazers and twenty million badges that that have been uh, earned to date. Um, so. Take a look at Trailhead again. If you just Google Salesforce Trailhead, this is going to come up. It's free. It's available to anybody. Um, and then the, the other piece, more than just the, the, the gamification, if you will, of, 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 of these learning modules is the Trailblazer Connect program. Um, again, Google it. URLs right here at the bottom as well. But there's opportunities there to gain mentors. There's a listing of career fairs. Um, there's uh, other trailhead events, and, and obviously that has all been transitioned to online these days, but there's, there's a vast amount of resources that you could take advantage of at your fingertips right now that, that are free for you. So that's my spiel. Hopefully it wasn't too painful. Hopefully it uh, provided a little bit more context of what you're about to see. So Stephanie, are you there? I'm here. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and you should be able to show your screen. Great. Okay. And are we seeing the home page, John? Yes, good to go. Perfect. So hi everyone, it's really nice to be with you all and um, 
I'm going to walk through some just basic information about the different products that Salesforce has, gives you a quick overview. And then I want to talk a little bit more about Trailhead. I pulled it up so I can show you some, um, some different ways that you can go through and things that might be helpful for you. Has anyone ever seen Salesforce before? Has anyone worked with Salesforce at all? No, not at all. Never worked, but I, I went down there before. Yeah. So I uh, used to work at a customer of Salesforce at a school, and we use Salesforce for recruiting and admissions. A lot of schools use Salesforce. So I know one of the questions that came through is, you know, how companies actually use it, what are the different ways. I want to walk you through kind of two primary ways that people use it. And because it is a relationship management tool, the goal of Salesforce is to create a 360 degree view of every constituent that you have. And you do that with data. So you've got to bring all of the data together to hopefully use that to better your processes, to take action on it and push your company or organization, nonprofit, education, whatever you're doing forward. So this is what we call Sales Cloud. And this is just a standard application that a company might use if they were involved in selling a product. And you can see the kind of different things that we have at the top here, but a lot of, you know, where the data comes in is you have accounts, which could be companies, they could be organizations, and you're collecting information about them. And you might be selling directly to a business. So you want to keep track of all the different meetings that you have, calls, emails that you send, all the different information. And there's probably going to be a number of people who are all working on the same thing. So you want this to be in one place where everyone has access to it and everyone can work together to make sure that the relationship with this company is the way that it should be. Along with the actual company, you have people who are connected to the company, different contacts that you want to interact with and collect data about. You want to understand who you're talking to so that you're personalizing the experience for them as much as possible. I think, you know, we all are consumers. We get emails sometimes that say, dear first name instead of dear Stephanie, or, you know, something that is completely unrelated to our interests. And that's kind of annoying, right? Because we're used to experiences like Netflix and Amazon where everything is personalized for us. So Salesforce allows companies to bring all of the data together and then use it so that we are speaking to Bob Hodges in the way that he wants to be spoken to about the things that are interesting to him. And this is going to help us make sure that we have a good relationship with him and that we're getting a lot of business with his company. So that's a very brief overview of how we collect information. Does anyone have any questions before I show you more of the data perspective of this? Okay. So, um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Do, so does that mean like, like these companies are using like us, like a, like some sort of like website or something where they can make their own website? Does that make sense? So they can do that? You mean like how they're collecting the information? Right. Yeah. So some companies will publish on a website and you can, you know, log in, especially if it's a sales kind of thing, you might log in to manage your account with that company and you give them your email address and your contact information and it will automatically create a profile for you. But other times it's someone just coming in, an employee of the company and filling out this form and at entering the data themselves. So no matter how you get the data in, you can do it either way, but there's always someone who's responsible for actually manually entering a lot of data in any system like this. Actually, wow. I, I, I have a question if I could, Stephanie. Sure. As, as, as it relates to this part of the presentation. So um, many years ago when I was working in private equity, our, some of our portfolio companies were using Salesforce and I was, involved with some of those projects. And I recall 
uh, one of the companies was pretty, pretty, pretty sales intensive in terms of the, the culture of the business. And one of the big challenge, and this is a long time ago. So at that time, there wasn't much digital e-commerce type business in general in the country and for sure at this company. So all the business was relationship oriented from sales execs, you know, calling on clients. So the big issue, one of the big issues was getting salespeople to actually input the contact information, such a simple, simple, simple thing. But, you know, and that's, that's not my question yet, um, but that was like one of the big challenges. How do you get the salespeople to actually manually input these, these leads or, or, or these customers that they're dealing with? But my question is more as, you know, fast forward, that was about 10, 15 years ago to 2021. And so much business is done now um, digitally online, uh, e-commerce, lots of transactions. So how has the CRM tool evolved to where, you know, you, you get a new customer that sort of came inbound through the internet. Um, how is that, you know, can you just tell us in, in very plain language, how is, how, how does that integration work with respect to a customer uh, sort of buying something online and having that information uh, automatically uh, synchronized to the Salesforce platform? Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the best innovations of a product like Salesforce is that it's cloud-based and it allows for that kind of integration. So a lot of previous systems were not as accessible to integrate with other things, but because Salesforce is based in the cloud and it has open API, mm. we can connect with websites, we can integrate. And because Salesforce is so popular, there's a lot of pre-built integration tools that people can download from the app exchange, just like they would from the app store for their phone. So Salesforce has our own products for things like commerce. So some customers are using Commerce Cloud. Um, other customers are just integrating their Shopify accounts into Sales Cloud so that they can keep all that data up to date. Because you know it's it's still a challenge right. of making sure people actually enter things. So the the more that we can do to automate that, we want right. to do. That. And I guess now that I think about the question I had in that type of a situation, there is no sales exec sitting between the customer and the company because the customer is basically doing the work for you by inputting their information as they buy something. <laughs> yeah. So they're putting in their own information, but even, you know, we have a mobile app and whenever you click to call someone, you can immediately log the call from the mobile app and put your notes in. So we're trying to make it easier, but there is definitely still that component of, you gotta make sure your users actually remember to take advantage of the tools that they have. Right, okay, thank you. But as we're collecting you know, all this different data, obviously we wanna do something with it. So this is an example of the kind of dashboard that a sales executive, like you were just talking about, might look at to see how things are going. What does their sales pipeline look like? You know, how many, what's the, what's the stage breakdown? How much business have we closed? Looks like, you know, apparently I'm doing much better than Cindy Central on my activities for the month. So that's exciting. But these are the kinds of things, you know, we're tracking how many calls have we logged, emails, different meetings, because that actually drives business forward, no matter what kind of business it is. So even if you work for a nonprofit and you're trying to work with donors, you want to track all of this activity to make sure that you're keeping those relationships up to date and doing your job. So Salesforce makes it really easy to take all of this information that people are entering and actually do something with it. Because if you just stick it in a system, and you never look at it, you never report on it, then it's, I mean, what's the point? But if you get it all in the system and you use it to drive your business forward, that's when it's really valuable. So just real quickly, I wanted to show you the other side, well, another side of Salesforce, which is Service Cloud. So we talked about sales and managing opportunities and pipeline and stuff, but Service Cloud is really meant to help manage customer service. So here's another dashboard that you can see, but we've got cases that we can work on. Um, we can see the different types of cases, the priorities, how quickly it's taking us to actually respond to customer issues. Because if we're taking way too long to get back to customers, 
that's going to mean they're not going to be interested in returning and doing more business with us or keeping their accounts with us. So we're using all this information to help make sure that we're on track and to help surface issues. If we see that there's a huge influx of cases, well, maybe there's something wrong with a product and we need to go back to the product team and get a fix for it. So there's a lot of different ways that we can use Salesforce. And when we look into cases, we're still looking at contacts. We're still pulling in information about the accounts. But now we're looking at it from the perspective of a, a service agent who actually is helping someone resolve an issue. So those are kind of the two primary ways that people use the CRM to manage both sales and service. Are and there I would questions? just add, I would just add for the students, like when Stephanie talks about service here, this is really, let's say, the operations side of a business, right? So if you were taking operations management or took it in the past or taking it now, right, this would be a, a type of um, uh, application that would be used from an operations perspective, right? Trying so, so don't confuse the word service with, let's say, customer service, right, which sometimes is sort of aligned more with sales and marketing. Um, this has more of an operations feel to it as far as this dashboard. Yeah, and you know, as you're thinking about all the different kinds of integrations, we're also making sure that people can reach us where they're at. So we're tracking emails. We can also track texts. If I were to pull up my list of cases, you could see that I've got cases that have come in from Facebook Messenger. I can get Twitter posts that turn into service cases. So I'm using these integrations to bring everything into the CRM into one place so that I'm not running back and forth to five different systems and four different spreadsheets trying to make sure I understand what's happening with my business. I apologize, my cat is screaming in the background. She's hungry. Um, so, I know we've we've thought a little bit about analytics and data as well. So I wanted to show you a quick view of two specific analytics products that Salesforce has. The first one is called Tableau CRM. And this is a sample dashboard. And what Tableau CRM does is it's kind of a supercharged version of the operations dashboards that we saw. But we're pulling all this information together and it allows us to take action directly from within the dashboard. So here I have a donation summary. So this is for, you know, um, this is for an advancement opportunity for, you know, a, essentially a university who's fundraising. And I can see the different pipelines, but I can also go in and I can make changes and say, you know, I, I only want to, I want to see by city instead of by billing state, or I only want to look at mid-market accounts. And I'll be able to see everything change right away. I can click into things to drill into them further, but I, you know, I can also come down here and take action on each of these, these different donations, click into them. And now she's locked herself in my, it's okay. Um, and update these different donation accounts or check in, leave notes for the different people who are involved. So um, this is just another one of the ways that we can handle analytics and bring things together in a slightly different view than what you saw in the general operations dashboards. So let me ask a question here, actually, Stephanie, because I'm sure someone is thinking this. Someone is think has what I'm about to ask you in their mind. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Um, we're all, so the most, uh, how do I put this, rudimentary spreadsheet application that most students are familiar with would be Excel possibly, or Google Sheets, something like that, where they can, you know, and we, we talked about Excel in one of our previous calls here in the Math Minds Project. Um, you know, where you can kind of build charts and bar charts and things like that and store, store, store information, right? It's a sort of very basic way to do that. Give us a little, in, in your words, give us an understanding as to kind of how a simple tool like Excel 
I know <laughs> the answer is it, it, ver it, it contrasts a lot, but tell us how Salesforce and these like Tableau uh, visualizations that you're showing us right now, give the students a little understanding as to how this is supercharged vis-a-vis -vis the Excel platform. Yeah, well, in my mind, they're easier to use than Excel because there's a lot of intuitive features. And I can show you, if you run a report in Salesforce, there's a button to add a chart. And Salesforce looks at the data that you have in your report and suggests the type of chart that makes sense based on your data. And you can change it on the fly and you can use it differently. It's easy to share with executives in a way that makes sense to them. But one of the best things about having your information in a CRM like this is that it's automatically updated. So if I'm working on something and John is also working on something, when I run the report, it looks at John's changes as well as mine. So we're not having to email spreadsheets back and forth and inevitably lose track of which version we're on and right. everything is gonna stay up to date. So everyone has the access to the most up-to-date information and every report will be refreshed at the time. Right, because of the cloud aspect of it, right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's sort of like, it, it, I mean, again, this is just for the student's edification. It's kind of like Excel on major steroids, but uh, with a sort of overlay of, um, of visualization tools that help you sort of automate that visualization in a way that something like an Excel doesn't do for you, plus the element of the cloud base, which allows you to um, uh, seamlessly uh, share the same updated data with your colleagues. Is that I think that's a good way to put it. Reasonable. Okay. Yeah. And okay. what I like, and maybe we'll go into Tableau. So um, I pulled a spreadsheet. I don't know if anyone is familiar with the Penn World Tables data, but it's a lot of just basic economic data. It's one I had to work with in my grad program a lot, so I had it saved on my computer already. Um, but as you can see, it's completely overwhelming. A ton of information, lots of different years worth of data. And so I, um, I wanna put this into Tableau to show you how tools like Tableau and Salesforce can make it easier for people to use um, and actually make use of a spreadsheet like this. So let me load it in real quick. And it's pretty straightforward. It recognized the different tabs on my spreadsheet, so I can just drop it in, go to the worksheet. And here I have all of the different headers. And let's say I wanna look at the different countries, but I don't wanna look at them in a table like this. Tableau says, oh, hey, do you wanna put these into a map? So now I can quickly visualize the different countries in a map. If I wanted to filter and say, okay, I only wanna look at the most recent year. It shows me all the different ranges of values and I can restrict it to just 2019. And I know I wanna look at GDP, but I also know that I wanna look at it per capita. So this here is gonna be my GDP, but what I wanna do is just create a quick calculated field. And I'll drag this over so you can see it. So I have my GDP here and I can just select another field, which will be my population. And now I have a per capita GDP that I can drop in, change the color. And now my data is filtered with a heat map based on per capita GDP. And that's a lot easier than having to go through my Excel spreadsheet and filter everything down and try and run averages and compare. Now I have a really quick, easy way to see what the global per capita GDP is in 2019. And I might notice a few surprises, like Ireland's compared to the United States wouldn't have expected something like that. But because I visualized it, I can see all of that information.
Stephanie, how, how I've, I haven't actually worked with Tableau myself, but how, how granular is the, uh, the sort of mapping element? Like to what level of detail uh, can, can one go? For example, in the United States, uh, is it by state? Can you go down to the zip code level? Like what, what's the granularity? Yeah, so let me see if I can pull it up in a separate workbook real quick. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I'll just come back here. So I had one that we used for a different demo and let me see if it'll load. It might take a minute. But we actually went in and we looked at New York City schools and we used Einstein to calculate the number of days we expected the number of sick days we expected students to have during the height of the COVID pandemic. So if you have location data, you can get really granular. You can actually, you know, choose the direct schools and you can use the map tools to just say, okay, I only want to look at these schools here in this region. Um, but it, it is extremely granular. Okay. I think you have a hand raised in uh, uh, Lee Fenson. Did you want to unmute and ask a question? Yes, um, I wanted to ask a question. Hello, Stephanie. Um, my name is Lee Fenton. I'm a junior at Baruch, major in economics. And my question to you is, you know, as an undergrad student, um, you know, realizing how the world of business is changing with, um, you know, technology and the business industry, it's kind of creating a fintech industry, which is like the most viable industry there is today as we go on. Um, I wanted to ask, you know, as undergrads such as me goes on and graduates and, you know, apply for jobs and we, ha well, we are required to learn these, you know, software skills, what are some struggles that you've experienced or that you probably are still experiencing when you're using software or CRM such as this? Because I understand that, you know, Salesforce is a platform to make business run smoothly, more efficiently, more effectively. But to me, having not not being really comfortable or you know used to seeing this, it looks really complicated. So, what are some difficulties that you've had, you know, using a platform like this? Yeah, that's a great question. So at first, I'll say I was intimidated by how quickly things can change in the software world. Salesforce has three releases a year and there's always something new to learn. And at first that was intimidating, but then it became kind of fun because there's always something new to learn. But I think the trick is to find out the fundamental things that you have to know about a system because a lot of times that's not gonna change. Like Salesforce isn't gonna change accounts and contacts in the way that you enter data into the system and the way that you, you know, maybe add an automation tool to make your life easier. But there's gonna be new features and things that come out. So part of it is blocking out a lot of the noise that is cool, but distracting shiny stuff that doesn't make a difference in your day to day. And then the other part of it is making sure that you know the fundamentals of whatever system you wanna learn. Because there's some things that aren't going to change. Thank you. No, I, I, I can add into that in the sense that it's from a high level, it's continuous learning. Um, you're going to graduate in a year and a half, two years, always got to learn. And, and whether that's a specific system or a, a, a new skill, um, that never stops. And I think, um, you know, it, it can't because, because, I mean, the slide that I showed before, the rescaling, that's a, it's, a, it's a great example of why continuous learning is a necessity. Um, and yeah, and it, it's a matter of where do you put your efforts and, and, and where, where is your focus? And that's, you know, that's based on where you want to go and your interests. I have a question. Um, you mentioned that there's like a lot of cool features that aren't necessarily like going to be useful towards the business, but they're there. So I was wondering if would do companies like have the option to like 
lock it down or just like put it to the side that that it's not there so it's like they could ignore it and just focus on what they need yeah it depends on the type of business that you're in honestly because there are some really cool things that you know might come out for service but you're more focused on sales so you know got to focus on what's going to be most effective for you but yeah, there are definitely ways, you know, not every feature is going to be turned on automatically. There are some things that an administrator might need to set up or configure. Um, and so there, there are ways like that, you know, obviously we want to have as little disruption to users as possible. So everything is meant to be a, as seamless as an update as it can be. But there's, you know, there's always some new things to learn and, and new features to figure out and, um, yeah, it's it's just about more about knowing your own business and what's going to work and make a difference for you and for your users than anything else. Thank you. I have one question. So is Salesforce geared towards like larger companies or, you know, are there small companies that actually use Salesforce? There are tons of small companies that use Salesforce and we have some kind of specific things that are called Salesforce essentials that are for small businesses who just want to get started and don't need everything that like, you know, an Adidas might need. So it does have some of the more pared down features to make it easy for people to implement quickly for a small business. But, you know, the school that I used to work for was would have been considered a small business. It was pretty tiny, but Salesforce made a huge difference for us. Um, and I think that's one of the things that I like most about it is that it works not just for the big companies, but for the little ones too, little tiny nonprofits who are, you know, very focused on a particular city or global nonprofits that are, you know, like the World Food Program. So um, there's definitely a way for everyone to get use out of the platform. Okay. Yeah. My company yeah. actually started using it, but they are like, uh, I think it's about 4,000 you know, so the managers were um, training on it and there's actually a vacancy for Salesforce um, administrators. So I am, you know, I'm glad to be here. So, you know, because I keep hearing Salesforce, Salesforce, and I have no idea what it is. So this is interesting for me. Yeah, so let me show you Trailhead because John mentioned it earlier and it is a pretty powerful tool. So. Can I, can I interject this real quick before you continue, Stephanie? And, oh, sure. and this is going to be important. So as you show students Trailhead, I think it would be useful to recommend uh, one or two immediate places for these guys to go to sort of like get some sort of, you know, to, to go one level deeper after this meeting. Like, you know, because Trailhead is quite expansive. So if you can recommend something specific, I, I think that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll make a couple of recommendations. Um, just give me one second. I'm just trying to get a broken link working real quick. And- I kind of have one more question. Sure. Um, so this is kind of, I, I think I already know the answer to this, but um, your um, advice on it or Jonathan's advice on it could help me. Um, so as you know, we see time progress from your experience and from Jonathan's experience as well, would you guys say or predict that the business industry is requiring a set of us? Um, from your advice and from your experiences, would you guys say that um, people heading into the business world um, is it required to have two different skill sets, which is tech skill sets and business relations skill sets as well? Because the world of business is changing and into online, so that's a pattern that I'm seeing as new companies um, start to hop on trends such as tech. Yeah, I think it's an important observation that you need both because some people forget one for the other. They think, oh, I just need tech skills. I don't need the communication skills, but that's still gonna be absolutely critical for business. I think there needs to be some level of tech fluency. You don't have to be able to code, 
And that's one of the things that Salesforce um, is pretty passionate about is democratizing technology so that you don't have to be a coder to be able to use it. You don't have to know SQL to be able to run a report or build a pretty dashboard. It's just drag and drop clicks. So I think there does need to be a level of tech fluency that everyone has because it's gonna make your life easier and help you add more value to the company faster, but the communication skills are always gonna be critical. Yeah, and let me piggyback on that for a second too. And, and I think it's important to, to, to stress that, especially coming out of college, you know, by, by design and just the nature of it, you're not gonna have a ton of experience. And so throughout your, your, your tenure in college, you try to get experiences, whether it's a side job or internships, but through how do you position yourself to gain skills, right? Because you're not gonna have five years, six years, 10 years experience, which a lot of jobs require, but you need to be able to get your foot in the door with a skill. What is that skill? What do you have to offer? And so think of it in that sense too. Um, and, and maybe it's not something you want to do for the rest of your career, but if you're in the right organization or you're in the right career path that, that's for you, you start with that skill and then you transition or you, and, and you go into another area. And, and I say that um, in, in the sense, if you look at my career path, I started in higher education. So did Stephanie. We weren't in sales. We weren't working for a quote unquote business but we were working in the industry that we're, we're, we're selling to now. Um, and you know, we had different areas that we were working in, but ultimately we're sort of doing, we're doing what we started out doing just in a different manner. Um, and it's ultimately because we required, we acquired skills and, and we transitioned our career along the way. So, so again, you know, think about your path and think about your interests and, and more than just getting that next job, but where do you want to take things? I, I think also can, can potentially help, help, you know, help frame your, your, your path, if you will. Yeah. So I've dropped the link in here, but this was what John was talking about earlier, where you can take a quiz and talk about different career paths. If you know there's an opening for a Salesforce administrator, um, there's a pretty quick, easy way to get started and see what kind of learning you might need in order to be a Salesforce administrator. So there's, there are these things called trail mixes where you can put together different links or learning modules into a single place. Um, and it's kind of a guided learning path. So this is a trail mix for Salesforce administrators. And that's, an administrator is the person on the back end who's gonna be configuring Salesforce. When someone needs a new custom field to store a new piece of data, they'll create the custom field. Or whenever someone says, you know what would make my life easier is if this was automated for us, then um, they'll be able to go in and create that automation. And again, you don't have to know how to code to be an administrator. I I don't know how to code very well. That is not one of my skill sets. But I was the administrator for our school for six years, and it helped me get my job at Salesforce. And most of what I learned, I learned on Trailhead. So just real quick, if I may interrupt here, folks, um, Michelle is grab Michelle uh, from the Math Minds Project is grabbing these links off of the chat box. Just in case you guys don't get to it, these are links that our uh, Jonathan is is putting links into the chat box. So we'll we'll get that we'll get those to you guys by email. Okay, so you don't have to quickly scramble and copy them all if you're not in a situation to do so. That's number one. And then I wanted to ask Stephanie regarding what you just said about coding. Um, did uh, you know? I, I recently, for example was uh, myself learning a little bit about MySQL coding, uh, just to you know, see, kind of see what that kind of database coding looks like. Would you say that a, a, a Salesforce administrator needs to code at that level where you have to be able to, let's say, code for queries? Is that a reasonable? I mean, you're not doing software programming. It's more like you know writing 10 lines of query code. Is that sort of the level that you need? Or is it even more basic than that? I never had to write queries for Salesforce. Anytime you want to run a report, it's just picking the field, dragging and dropping it onto oh, the canvas. So it's modularized. You don't have to actually write query code. Okay. 
which is one of the best things about Salesforce, because every time I talk to someone who is using a different product, they're like, oh, I had to learn SQL. And every time I have to go to my one person who knows it so that they can write me a report because you don't have to do that with Salesforce. Anyone can build reports and it's beautiful. Right. That's good. Well, that is definitely a plus because I know like I I don't know SQL, but I decided to check it out myself uh, and it's definitely a learning curve there. Okay, sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead and keep going. No worries. Feel free to interrupt anytime. Um, The other thing I wanted to talk about with Trailhead is if you, you know, maybe you don't know if you want to be an admin, you don't really know what you want to learn. You can come here and filter out um, through the different products that we have or what kind of role you might be interested in having if you're a beginner. Um, You can see education cloud and nonprofit cloud are are here as well. So if you're interested in ever working with a nonprofit, you can come in and learn about products that Salesforce built directly for nonprofits or for education. We also have financial services cloud. So if you're interested in banking, there are some specific learning trails here that talk about the way that Salesforce approaches banking and different things that we've built that customize the solution for that. Um, But there's also some super fun stuff in here about the UN Sustainable Development Goals. If you wanted to learn more about those and how, you know, you can support them, Salesforce is committed to working within the Sustainable Development Goals, and so that's a part of our product. We have things in here for Google Analytics, if you're interested in that kind of analytics and data. So there's a lot that you can do. So it's not just strictly Salesforce, but there's also fun things in here about presentation skills. Um, learning how to handle security, if you're interested in technological security information, how to give presentations or, or write resumes. So there's, there's a lot of fun things in here. And as you can see, I very much enjoy doing this and I'm still doing it all the time. Yes, Trailhead is a learning platform. Can I ask a question? Yes. Oh, uh, I don't know who else. Should I ask or someone else? Because I don't want to talk. Okay. Um, so basically, um, I have to know it. Um, the this learning platform. Um, are like I know like once you're in Salesforce, you're able to get like you know more certifications or whatnot. Like because they want you to higher education. Um, but are there like. Or is this platform like they just do, let's say, let's say an hour and 15 minutes of anything or like, you know, or is it like they can actually delve into topics where we can really learn something out of it and then help us um, with our with our career path? Or do you have to be in Salesforce to get like those higher educational things? Like, how does that work? Yeah, so two things to know about Trailhead. First is a lot of these modules and trails that you see include hands-on learning. So you get practice trail, you get practice Salesforce orgs. We call them playgrounds. So it's an actual copy of Salesforce with the most up-to-date enhancements for sales cloud or service cloud or whatever. So that you can actually go through and do hands-on practice, follow along to learn how to actually customize the org, to learn how to set up workflow automation, all of those different things. So you definitely get lots of hands-on practice and it's a, you know, it's a fully functional Salesforce work. Um, so it's not just going through and watching videos and taking quizzes on things. It's a little bit more interactive than that. There are credentials that we call them super badges where it's, I'll just show you one. If you wanted to be, if you wanted to do the one on reports and dashboards, once you've gone through the different trails and it gives you the prerequisites here, you get essentially a business use case and you have to follow along and it doesn't give you any step-by-step instructions, but it tests you throughout the thing to see if you can follow along with the use case and interact with this real world scenario. And you get the super badge and you can put it on LinkedIn um, as a sign that you have additional skills in the area of reports and dashboards. There are also Salesforce certifications. Um, the, The certification prep is free the certifications do cost money to actually um, take the exam, but there are discounts available for, you know, nonprofits and education. So um, 
but yes, you can go through and you can do the entire training and prep process uh, online for free and then schedule the exam if you wanted to have that for a particular credential that you need for your job. But you can put your trailhead badges on LinkedIn and your super badges on LinkedIn too. Wow. Do you need a, um, a college degree in order to apply for Salesforce? Like, how does that work? If we wanted to, let's say, get some sort of experience um, before we actually finish our college degree? Uh, we do have internships, and I don't have that information in front of me, John. But Salesforce does have an internship program um, that we can probably find more information about and send over to you guys. But I would say, I mean, there are tons of businesses and nonprofits in New York City that use Salesforce, and they're forever looking for help, whether that's with administrators or just users who understand Salesforce. I, When I was the director of admissions at my school, I had student workers, and several of them came back and said they got jobs at their record label or the nonprofit that they were working at because they had Salesforce experience just working in the system. And, and, guys, and I can say, oh, go ahead, speaking, yeah, Ken, I think we're maybe going down the same path, but but from a, a CUNY perspective, there are folks within the CUNY central office and workforce development that, that are either have some programs, expanding some programs sort of around this. And it's not just Salesforce, but Salesforce is a big component of it. And they're sort of in the, um, uh, I would say planning stages, um, but they're, if you're interested in sort of taking it to the next level, Yes, trailhead, but also reach out to your, your existing students at CUNY. Reach out to your CUNY resources um, and tell them you're looking to, to expand here, and they may be able to point you in the right direction and connect you with other organizations that can, um, that can assist. And maybe that's subsidizing a certification. Maybe that's getting in touch with a career mentor. Um, there's other programs right now that exist that I think if, if you want to go down this path, you, you, you have the resources to do so with, with existing resources. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just say that uh, this is really directed to the students on the call. And I think that the, re the reason why I wanted to have uh, these guys, Jonathan and Stephanie, on here today is because I know that the general awareness uh, among the student population of uh, Salesforce and its CRM platform and Tableau, for that matter. I, I know that it's, it's it, the the awareness is not super high, um, but I would just recommend you guys take it step by step here. Okay, in other words, don't get ahead of yourselves. Today is about generating some initial awareness. You all have that awareness now. Uh, you're now being introduced to a way for you to take that awareness to the second step. And I would highly recommend you all uh, go through Trailhead, uh, which is basically, let's just call it what it is. It's a massively open online platform, similar to a Coursera or edX or whatever, but specific to Salesforce, right? That's what it is, right? Very similar setup in that way. A lot of it is free. Uh, as Stephanie said, some of it is paid for certain types of certifications, but you can surely get started uh, and learn a lot through the badging system and begin to then use that. Like, so what I wanted to do today, frankly, and I think we got there, is get you to the point, get you excited about this so that when you start applying for jobs and the person across the table from you says, you know, hey, have you heard of Salesforce? We use Salesforce here. Do you know what that is, right? Now you're not going to, you're going to be able to say something about it. Like you're not going to, you know, you're not going to be lost. Like, oh, oh yeah, Salesforce. I think I saw a commercial on TV about Salesforce, right? Now you're going to know something about it. Maybe you'll go and do some of the badging. So, you know, these are immediate steps you can take. Behind the scenes, I don't, I know that there was some talk at CUNY about like, let's say trying to set up a bigger partnership with Salesforce, but let's not even worry about that on this call, right? You guys as students, you're gonna graduate soon, just focus on getting the learning going right now. Um, and that would be my advice to you. Um, I would, um, okay, let me stop my spiel now. Uh, and let me give it back to Stephanie to continue or fin finish up, or I'm not sure where you were at, Stephanie. 
Yeah. So I just have one last thing as we finish and John shared the links in the chat and I know um, they're saving for you guys, but I put together a couple of trail mixes that have some super basic information. If you just wanted somewhere to get started, just like what is Salesforce? How does this work? Um, that just gives you some pretty quick overviews of the different things in these modules. Like when you go into reports and dashboards, you're going to actually practice building a report and you'll see how easy it is to do. So um, I put these together just as a way to give you something easy to help because sales and trailhead can be a little overwhelming. There's hundreds of badges. Um, so then where, you where can we grab is this link already in the chat box, yep. Stephanie? This link is in the chat. And then the other one is I put one together that's more specific to analytics. So okay, if great. you want to focus more on the analytics products that we talked about, this gets you started with Tableau CRM great, great, and great. Tableau. Okay, great. So those, so we'll get those. So those are in the chat box. Yep. We'll, uh, uh, Michelle, guys, Michelle will, uh, will send that out by email to you. Okay. Um, awesome. Um, okay. So is, is so is, that's, I'm assuming that's, that's the presentation, right? So I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. So awesome. So do you guys have, so we got about just a few more minutes here. We'll, we'll, we'll do a hard end at seven 30. Um, anybody have questions for these guys? I mean, let's take advantage of the fact that they're here with us. Um, anybody else? Hello. Are we Wait, hang on. Let's uh, let's let someone who didn't ask a question maybe ask a question first. So, anybody want to ask a question who has not yet spoken? Yes, I like to ask a question. Okay, this is Joshiba, right? Yep. Yes. Um. First, I like to thank um you guys for coming. Thank you for your time. I like to know, like, have there been any backlash from any other companies? Because I've read about like the lawsuits about data. So I'd like to know if there have been any lawsuits that affected their reputation in a way. Yeah, that's a great question. So are you talking about like data breaches? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So yes. Salesforce is trust is our number one value. And that means that you need to be able to trust us with your data. And we haven't had any issues with breaches like that, which is great. And it's built into the platform. We are constantly testing our own code and our own security and making sure that no one can gain access because that would be huge. If you can't trust us with your data, then that's awful. So we have a number of things that are built into the platform. And then we also give the users tons of control. So everything is built on the model of, you know, who is allowed to see what and what's the principle of least privilege. And that's one of the most important things when you're designing a system with technology is making sure that People only have access to the data they need to do their job. So if you have a social security number in your database, that needs to be locked down so that only the person who has like actually needs that to do their job can ever see that piece of data because you don't want that to accidentally get out. So we protect it both from the database perspective, but also from the user's perspective too. So we try to limit user error. Okay, thank you. And I'll just, another quick thing I'll point out as it relates to data. We talked about analytics. Einstein is a feature that has a lot of predictive modeling and things built into it. And as we know, there can be some challenges whenever you're building models and predictions using data because you can accidentally build bias into those models. So Salesforce has built in some things that will alert you like, hey, you're using this data point that we think could introduce some bias into your model and make and make it inequitable so that you're not actually looking at the reality of the situation. Do you, are you sure you wanna include this? So we're constantly evolving that to make sure that we're keeping people at the forefront and the center of what we're doing so that we're not accidentally building things that disadvantage people. Thank you. Thank you, another question? Uh, yes, I have a question for Can you just say your first name? Uh, I was saying yes, I have a question um, for Jennifer, I believe. Your name is Jennifer. 
Sorry, I forgot that one. Stephanie, I think. Stephanie, Stephanie I'm so sorry. Yeah, Stephanie. Okay. Um, yeah, so how did you apply the information you learned on, on the learning platform, like, to your role? You know what I mean? Like, how do you know? Not really how do you know, but, like, yeah, how do you apply it? And how do you know if, like, you know, you're you're understanding the concept. Um, I mean, you're in the field now, yes, but I mean, for someone who isn't in the field, you know, who's still in school, like how would I get, you know, get value from using the online learning platform? Yeah, so my background is not in technology or science. My degree is liberal arts, um, politics, philosophy, and economics, actually. So I, kind of start, I got into this because I was curious and I'd heard a lot about it and I wanted to learn more. And as I started working for an organization that was using Salesforce, it became more of a necessity. I, I was working in the platform and I wanted to make it go better. So I started learning more about how I could improve my own life. It was kind of selfish, let's be honest. I wanted to make my life easier as a recruiter so I learned more about Salesforce. And as I started learning more and I started realizing how I could help other people, how I could help other users with what I was learning, that's when I became the administrator and was responsible for essentially building solutions to people's problems. Learning Salesforce, learning technology, it's just problem solving. So if you can understand what your users are telling you and you can understand the business process behind it, you can apply what you know about technology to make people's lives better. Thank you for that. I think, you know, I think we all want the same thing to, you know, we want to make sure what we're doing is, you know, valuable to others and helping others in the process. Right. So thank you. And by the way, I just want to add on to that a little bit to take a different twist on it. You know, remember with the whole Math Minds project, this is not about just learning math and reviewing math, right? I've been trying, we've been saying that all along. It's about thinking mathematically and thinking mathematically is useful because it turns you into a better problem solver. Because when you learn to solve problems with an application of numbers, it actually starts to, pl it, it starts to bleed into other areas of life or work that don't necessarily deal with numbers as the primary thing, right? So it, it really does all come down to critical thinking and problem solving more than anything and building those, building those skills, the things like math or whatever we're learning in school, these are all just really tools to help us kind of get to that point where we become better problem solvers, better critical thinkers. Because as these guys, by the way, pointed out, right? And I think Jonathan said, it, I think very clearly, and I agree with him, the, 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 the velocity of change in the business world is so fast now that it's not a really about what you know, but in my opinion, this is my Ken Globman's opinion, but how quickly can you learn what you need to know? Now, of course, of course you need to go to the job interview knowing something or else you probably won't be there in the first place. But really it's how quickly can you aspire to learning the next thing because the next thing is coming around the corner very, very quickly, okay? So um, any other questions? Um, yeah, questions? Um, is there a way we can please have your LinkedIn or um, somehow where we can connect you? So what I can do is uh, whatever, whatever information these guys are, are, are okay with sharing, uh, Jonathan will, I'll ask Jonathan to send it to me, whatever that is, and we'll, uh, and we'll, and we'll get that out. Okay. Can we do it that way so that they can decide, you know, how, how that, how that, how to do that. Um, yeah, Ken, I'm, I'm fine if you share my email address and yeah, and you can just search my name on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm there as well. There you go. So thank you. I'll, I, I will share. Uh, in, in Michelle's email to you guys, we'll share Jonathan's uh, email address. Okay. Okay. Um, also, if we wanted to ever open up a nonprofit organization, um, how do we get in contact with like the people at Salesforce? Well, I, I actually, I'm, I'm not even sure what 
exactly you're trying to ask there because these guys wouldn't be who you would contact to open up a not-for-profit. Um, essentially, once you have your not-for-profit up and running, then you would perhaps speak with um, Jonathan or, or Stephanie about becoming a customer or a client of Salesforce. Is that what you mean? Becoming a client of Salesforce yeah. as a not-for-profit? Yeah, so we have our own dedicated website, salesforce.org, and you can find information about nonprofit cloud, education cloud, and more there. And there are forms there for you to reach out and start, you know, trial orgs to get started with nonprofit. And that's actually a good point. So, as a nonprofit, even education institutions, um, Salesforce provides 10 free licenses. Um, so to, to get those again, they're free. You go to, you know, you just poke around. I can find the link here and I can send it through in the chat, but, um, you can, as long as you're technically a nonprofit, you can sign up for it and you can start hammering away. That's good to know. I didn't know that. So if you're not for profit, 10 free licenses or 10, not non-paid uh, and as as part of dot org, one of one of I mean that's one piece, and then also there's significant discounts that that we uh, offer our our dot org customers. So again, philanthropy, nonprofits, and edu education. Um, and this range is roughly anywhere from fifty to to eighty percent off of the commercial pricing. And because Salesforce's company values um, donating employee time back. We also provide pro bono support and consulting opportunities for specific projects that nonprofits and educational institutions might have. So if, there, if you work for a nonprofit or an educational institution and there's a, a Salesforce project you're interested in, um, there's a form you can fill out to you know, maybe get some pro bono support from Salesforce employees to help you with that project. So I have a question for John, well, actually Jonathan or Stephanie, it doesn't matter, but my, uh, just a little bit of a different question for you, okay? I'm gonna put you a little bit on the hot seat here. It's not directly about Salesforce. Um, in your work experience, and either one of you can answer or, or both, in your work experience, um, and it sounds like you guys are not coming from pure analyst jobs. It sounds like you're more in a sales account orientation, as I understand it, like a sales rep, account management type roles from what I'm listening. So I, I say that for a reason. You're not, I, I, am, I imagine you're not doing heavy number crunching in your jobs. But what I'd like to know is how, do, how does math or numbers more generally come into the sort of orbit of your everyday work life and like how just from the work you do, how can you see thinking mathematically or being better at math helping you in what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? And either one of you can take that. I, I, I can t take stab at that first, um, and Stephanie can chime in. But you know, I, I'm you know my to, to put it simply, I'm I'm in sales, and and a lot of what I do and a lot of what Salesforce does is forecasting. <laughs> and in planning your not just your your week or your month, but your quarter and your and your year. Um, so so having an idea of you know where you need to be, how you're going to get there um, is is important. And um, so that's one piece. And, and, and you know and, and and I think you know of course you know basic percentages and and a little bit of data crunching in terms of using some of the tools that 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 Stephanie uh, showed us today uh, go, go into that in terms of dashboards and, and charts. Um, so you know on a on a daily basis, I think that's that's probably the, the primary way where um, you know those analytical skills uh, come into play. And then I guess as I'm as I'm thinking about this more too. You know, as, as I have conversations with customers, a lot of what I talk about is how much does something cost and what's the return on that investment. Um, and so tying metrics to, to the money they're going to spend with us, KPIs, key performance indicators, and showing the value that they're going to get from spending X amount of dollars with us. So, so having that conversation in real time, what we would say again, back at the napping, back at the napping calculations, um, uh, on the fly, 
um, is, is, is important to have. Right. Thank you. Good. Good. I think that's, you know, I, I could totally see that, you know, back of the envelope calculations, percentages, you know, your, your, uh, your normal um, rate might be X for a hundred seats. Someone needs 50, having to quickly figure out what that looks like. And then if you want to apply a 20% discount, being able to calculate that in your head, possibly without having to go to the calculator would be an example of something that could be useful in a conversation that you're having with a prospective client, for example. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions for, uh, for, for Jonathan or Stephanie about Salesforce or Tableau? No, we're good. Hi, this is Mina. I have a quick question. Who's, who's that? Mina. Mila. Yes. Mila? Yes. Go ahead, Mila. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to know if maybe I could speak to what dashboard features seem to be most popular or requested when using Tableau to present data to decision makers? Whatever makes it the easiest for the decision maker to understand. Okay. It's going to be different depending on the types of data, but typically your goal in data visualization is to make it as easy to understand as possible for people who don't know the data to look at the visualization and get the idea of what you're trying to tell them. Remember guys, we didn't, we didn't talk about it too much these last 10 weeks, but one of the big thing is being able to have your data tell a story, right? And that's really the element of quote unquote math that I think is most prevalent in the, in, 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 in the workplace for that matter. If you're not a mathematician or data scientist per se, uh, having your data tell a story, whatever that story is and being able to do that, translate that data to a, a chart, a graph, a map, whatever, and then being able to present that. That's really the where the, the, the math, the numbers skills uh, become handy, or at least as we talk about it with the Math Minds Project. Thank you. Um, all right, so any last question? We'll take one more, if there's one more. Anybody else? No? Okay, well, uh, I think we should give a virtual uh, applause for, uh, for Jonathan and Stephanie for, for joining us today. I think you can do a virtual applause in, in, uh, in Zoom actually. But um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for taking the time. Actually, I learned something as well. Uh, I didn't know about the uh, philanthropic aspect of Salesforce actually. So I learned about, I didn't realize that there was that personally didn't know there was a Salesforce, salesforce.org. Um, so that's good, good information. And you guys, I hope you appreciated this little kind of um, primer. And uh, they also uh, you know, were kind enough to, to provide you some direction on how you can use Trailhead to learn a little bit more. And then of course you can learn as much as you want, right? It's up to you, uh, which is the great thing about democratized education these days. So uh, take advantage of it. Uh, thanks again, guys, uh, uh, Jonathan, Stephanie, for being here. Uh, and uh, I hope we stay in touch and perhaps find another way to interact in the future. And everyone on uh, all the students and everyone on the Math Minds team, thank you again for being here. Uh, next, uh, just, just a, a quick uh, last note from me. Uh, next week is our last Tuesday, a live Tuesday meeting for the semester. Uh, I highly recommend you join us for the last meeting uh, before finals. Um, we are going to have a panel discussion with two recent CUNY grads out in the workforce and one other more senior person uh, who are going to talk about uh, from their perspective how data visualization, analytical thinking, and math more, regu more, more, more generally uh, plays a role and a factor at their jobs. So you'll get a chance to talk to people in their jobs and how all that stuff plays out in their jobs. And for all we know, maybe some of them or all of them are Salesforce uh, clients. Don't know. We'll find out. Maybe they'll talk about that. 
but we'll see next week. Okay, so meet, be here next week, same time, six o'clock. And um, well, I guess we're done. Thanks guys for being here. Uh, again, Jonathan, thank you so much. And Stephanie, thank you also. So I will stop here and wish everybody